Hello guys, welcome to another practical DevOps tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to set up a Kubernetes cluster using the KubeADM utility. Please check the description where I have given all the links to the required documentation and GitHub repository to follow this tutorial. You can use the blog link in the description as a reference for the entire setup as it is constantly updated with the latest Kubernetes version. KubeADM is a great tool to set up working Kubernetes cluster in less time. It simplifies the process of setting up all the Kubernetes cluster components and follows all the best practices for cluster configurations. There are solutions like Kind and Minikube which you can set up locally to have a Kubernetes environment. Those tools are great for development purposes but it abstracts away all the cluster configurations. While these tools can save time and reduce complexity, it is essential for a DevOps engineer to have a deep understanding of the various components that make up the Kubernetes cluster. Building and maintaining a self-hosted Kubernetes cluster provides valuable hands-on experience and exposes you to the system's complexities. This experience will help you better understand the cluster control plane and worker node components. So I strongly suggest using a self-hosted Kubernetes cluster during your learning process rather than using easily available solutions. With a multi-node cluster, you can have the setup that mimics the real-world project setup. Also, if you are preparing for CKA or CKS certification exams, it is important to note that cluster management using KubeADM is part of the exam syllabus. Let's look at the prerequisites to follow this tutorial. You should have a minimum of two Ubuntu nodes, one master and one worker node. The master node should have a minimum of 2 vCPU and 2 GB RAM. For the worker nodes, a minimum of 1 vCPU and 2 GB RAM is recommended. And here is an important requirement. Your nodes should have an IP range in the 10.x or 172.x series with static IPs for master and worker nodes. We will be using 192 series as the pod network range through the Calico network plugin. It is very important to have a non-overlapping node and pod IP addresses to avoid any type of IP and routing conflicts. Your nodes should be able to talk to each other on all these ports required by Kubernetes. If you are setting up KubeADM cluster on cloud servers, ensure you allow the ports in the respective firewall configuration. Also, make sure the subnets have the routing rules enabled for the CIDR ranges you use in the setup to avoid any sort of routing issues. All the commands and scripts used in this guide are hosted on GitHub. Clone the repository to follow along this guide. In a high level, here is what we are going to do. Deploy three virtual machines. Install container runtime on all the nodes. We will be using CRIO. Install kubeadm, kubelet and kubectl on all the nodes. Initiate kubeadm control plane configuration on the master node. It first pulls all the images from the registry.koh.io. Join the worker node to the control plane. Install the Calico network plugin to enable pod networking. Install Kubernetes metric server to enable pod and node metrics. Validate all the cluster components and nodes. Finally, deploy a sample Nginx app and validate the cluster. Here is how KubeADM works. When you initialize KubeADM, first it runs all the pre-flight checks to validate the system state and it downloads all the required cluster container images from the registry.kh.io container registry. It then generates required TLS certificates and stores it on the HC Kubernetes slash PKA folder. Next, it generates all the kubeconfig file for the cluster components in the HC slash Kubernetes folder. Then it starts a kubelet service and generates the static pod manifest for all the cluster components and saves it in the slash HC slash Kubernetes slash manifest folder. Next, it starts all the control plane components from the static pod manifests. Then it installs core DNS and kube proxy components. Finally, it generates the node bootstrap token. Worker nodes use this token to join the control plane. As you can see, all the key cluster configurations will be present under the HC slash Kubernetes folder. Let's get started with the hands-on labs. You can use any cloud or local virtualization setup of your preference. This setup will work on any platform. All you need to have is three virtual machines which will talk to each other on the required ports. For this demo, I am using AWS Cloud to deploy three virtual machines. I have a simple Terraform script that deploys three T2.medium instances with security groups that allows all the traffic between the nodes and allow traffic on port 6443 and node port range 30,000 to 32,768 from anywhere so that we can access the API server and applications on node port from our workstation. If you are a Terraform and AWS user, all you have to do is 
from the clone repository go to the instances folder in the main.tf replace the ami id key name and the subnet ids to your custom values then do a terraform init plan and then apply you will have three vms ready in a matter of minutes now that we have the vms ready let's get started with the setup to make the setup easier, I have added all the commands in two shell scripts under the scripts folder, common.sh and master.sh. For demonstration purposes and to save time, I will run the shell scripts containing all the commands. If you want to set up the cluster by executing the commands individually, you can follow the documentation. Let's take a look at the common.sh script. The common.sh should be run on all the nodes. Let's have a look at the script. Here we have the Kubernetes underscore version variable to set the required cluster version. Then we are disabling the swap and add a cron tab entry to keep the swap off during server reboots. It is a requirement for the setup. Then from lines 21 to 57, we execute commands to install the CRIO container runtime similar to the Kubernetes version. From lines 63 to 69, we install kubelet, kubectl and kubeadm based on the version that we set in the Kubernetes version variable. From lines 73 to 76, we are setting the respective node IPs to the kubelet extra args in the slash etc slash default slash kubelet file. This is required for few setup because the servers might have more than one IP addresses and kubelet might end up picking the wrong ones. Now you can run these commands one by one on all the nodes or execute the whole shell script. Here I'm logged into three nodes as the root user. K8's master one is the master node and k worker 2 and 3 are the worker nodes. We need to execute the commands as a sudo user, so ensure you logged in as root. I will clone the kubeadm scripts repository to all the VMs and cd into the scripts folder. Let's execute the common.sh on all the three nodes. It will take a few minutes for the script execution to complete. In all the nodes, the script has executed successfully. Next, we have the master.sh script. It should be run on the master node to set up the control plane components. Let's have a look at the script. Here, we are setting up the three environment variables, public IP access, node name, and pod CADR. If you are working on a POC in your personal or sandboxed environment, you might need access to the Kubernetes API server using the public IP address. For that, you can set the public IP access equal to true because the kubeadm initialization command parameter needs to be changed for public IP endpoints. Here, we are using pod CADR as 192 series. Ensure your node IP range doesn't conflict with the pod CADR range. Then, the images pull command here will download all the required images for the control plane components because except kubelet, every cluster component runs as a container. Then we have a condition to check if the public IP access is set to true or false. If it is false, then we fetch the private IP address of the server using the IP ADDR command and set it to the master private IP variable. Then we initialize kubeadm with the master private IP node name and pod CADR. If the public IP access is set to true, then we retrieve the public IP using curl and ifconfig.me service and set it to master public IP variable. Then we initialize kubeadm with control plane endpoint parameter with the public IP address instead of the API server advertised address parameter. That is the only change if you want to use the public IP address of the master node. Next, we copy the generated admin kube config file to the home folder so that we can execute kubectl commands from the master node. Finally, we install the Calico CNI plugin to enable pod networking. Now that we have an understanding of the master script, let's execute the script on the master node. I am executing this on the server with the public IP. So first I need to set the public IP access variable to true in the master.sh script on the master node. If you don't want to use the public IP, do not make any changes to the script as by default, the script picks up the private IP address of the server. Let's execute the master.sh script.
on a successful cube adm initialization you should get an output with cube config file location and the join command with the token copy that and save it to a file we will need the join command for joining the worker nodes to the master now let's verify the cube config by executing the kubectl command to list all the pods in the cube system namespace Here you can see all the cluster component pods like API server, etcd, code DNS and cube scheduler are running without any issues. We can also verify the readiness of the API server by querying the Kubernetes API server endpoint using kubectl. Here you can see all the API server endpoints return the OK status which means we have a working master node without any issues. Now let's join the worker node to the master node using the cube adm join command that we have got in the output while setting up the master node. If you do not have the command with you, you can print it using the cube adm token create command from the master node. I will copy the join command and will execute the join command from the two worker nodes. It performs the TLS bootstrapping for the nodes, meaning the TLS certificates required for the master and node authentication are automatically created in this process. Once it is successfully executed, you will see the output saying this node has joined the cluster. If you have multiple worker nodes, execute the node join command on all the worker nodes. I am configuring two worker nodes for this setup. Now from the master node, let's try to list the nodes. We can see three nodes, one is the control plane node and others are the worker nodes without any labels. Let's label the worker nodes as worker using the kubectl command. You need to replace kh worker 2 and 3 with the hostname of your worker node. If you list the nodes now, you can see the label worker on the worker nodes. To get CPU and memory metrics of pods, we need the metric server component in the cluster. It collects and stores resource usage data such as CPU and memory from each node in the cluster and exposes this data through Kubernetes API. KubeADM doesn't install the metric server component during its initialization. We have to install it separately. To verify this, if you run the top command, you will see the metrics API not available error. Let's deploy the metric server using the metric service manifest file present under the manifest folder. This manifest is taken from the official metric server repo. I have added the kubelet insecure TLS flag to the container to make it work because in our setup kubeadm uses self-signed certificates. The insecure flag is not recommended in actual projects or production environments as you have to use valid TLS certificates in the cluster. Let's deploy the manifest. If you check the cube system namespace, you can see the metric server getting deployed. Once it is in ready state, you can check the pod and node metrics using the top command. Here you can see the CPU and memory metrics of nodes and pods. It means the metric server is working as expected. Our final step is to validate the cluster by deploying an app and access it over a node port. We will deploy Nginx application and expose it using a service of type node port. Under the manifest folder, you will find the sample-app.yaml file. In this manifest, we have a deployment object with the latest Nginx image and a service object that exposes the Nginx deployment on node port 32000. Now let's deploy the sample app nginx deployment using kubectl. It is successfully deployed. To verify the node port service, let's try to access it using the worker node's IP and port 32000. Here I'm using the public IP address of the worker node. We are able to see the nginx homepage on node port. It means the cluster setup is working as expected. In the whole setup, I have used kubectl from the master node. 
If you want to access the Kubernetes cluster from your local workstation, you need to copy the admin.conf content, that is the admin kube config file, to your local .kube folder. I assume you have kubectl utility installed in your workstation. You can either copy the admin.conf file content or use SCP to copy the file to your workstation. First, open the admin.conf file present in the slash hc slash kubernetes folder. Here you can see the API server public endpoint and the certificate and token details that are required to authenticate against the API server. This config has full admin access to the cluster. Now I will copy the whole admin.conf file contents to the clipboard. In my workstation, I will open the config file under .cube folder. Now paste the admin.conf content to this file and save it. If I execute kubectl commands now, it will interact with my kubeadm cluster using the details present in the config file. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you face any issues with the setup or need any clarification, you can drop a comment. Also, check the kubeadm documentation link I have added in the description for the latest updates in the setup. In the next video, we will look at the important Kubernetes cluster configurations every DevOps engineer should know. Thank you and see you in the next video.